Hey Steve here from photomasteryclub.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can really make waves and water pop in your seascape images. So the image that's on the screen at the moment is a good example of when this technique is going to work nicely and the uh, kind of one of the prerequisites that you'll want to have is an image where there's a slightly long exposure uh, on the waves so you know they're not those real hard um, you know hard sort of harsh looking waves that you'd get with a really fast exposure and they're not completely smoothed out that you'd see uh, you know that, that it all kind of blends into one big blur which is a great effect but you know in this uh, for this particular technique what you're going to want is something where you know you can see the shape of the waves but it's got that smoothness to it so somewhere between half a second and a couple of seconds depending on how far away you are from the uh, from the waves themselves uh, so that will give us uh, a good starting point now what I'm going to do in this image here we can see particularly the uh, the waves are in the shadows of the image they're, they're sort of being shaded from the Sun by some other sort of rocks that are off over here on the right hand side out of frame and so that's given them a bit of a blue color cast now depending on the situation you might have uh, some sort of other color that's uh, being cast onto the waves um, but the method will work the same no matter what the what the color cast is so I'll just show you now the uh, the simple steps really to uh, to really make those waves pop now we're going to be using a curves adjustment layer so I'll add that and now with these three uh, eyedroppers over here in the properties panel of the curve I'm going to select the third one which is going to allow me to sample what I want the uh, what I want Photoshop to treat as the white point of the image so I'm going to try and find like the brightest part of the wave um, I'm just going to guess for now there are other ways that you can do this more accurately but I'll just click around here somewhere and we can see instantly that's brightened the image up significantly because now as far as this curves adjustment is concerned this area that I've clicked on is it should be white so it's adjusted all of the uh, the RG and B channels in the curves adjustment layer to make that white but then it's also made you know it's it's affected everything else in the image as well so two things we need to do the first is just reduce the opacity of this layer because I don't want that to be completely white uh, I want to keep as much detail in there as possible so I'm just going to reduce this to about 80 percent and then the next thing I'm going to do to make sure that we're only um, we're only using this effect where we want it is click command or control I whilst having the uh, layer mask selected so that turns the mask black therefore hiding this effect completely I'm going to select my brush tool with a white foreground and let's blend this in on about 50% opacity on the brush and I'm just going to brush into the foreground here and we can see as I do that the uh, the waves are kind of whitening up and I'll just do that in the whole foreground actually and sort of blend it out as we get higher up here maybe just a little bit over here I'm going to press 3 on the keyboard to reduce the opacity to 30% and I'll just brush through here now obviously that's made the water a lot brighter so you know that might be what you want to do um, if not if you want to retain the same sort of level of brightness but without uh, yeah, just without that color cast then you can just add another curves adjustment and darken the foreground or darken the image there by dragging the curve down and then do the same thing as before command or control I on the curves adjustment layer and let's brush that in now so about 50% and let's just brush that into the foreground here so we can see now it's getting darker actually I'll go 100% on the brush <clears throat> and we're just brushing that darkening effect in here and hey presto there we go so you know you can 
adjust this after the fact as well. So now that we've got that mask applied, we can, uh, you know, we can adjust the curve just to make it even darker if we want. But all the while, these uh, this area that we've selected here um, with that very first curves adjustment that should stay white. Um, in color at least and as a result that is what is making it really pop because it stands out against uh, you know against the the background and it, it kind of just reduces the uh, or it increases the contrast as well uh, so let me just hide these two layers now to see what we started with and you'll see what I mean about that so here it's a very low contrast um, and very blue kind of look and feel to that foreground and those waves and now here, as promised, it uh, really makes those waves pop. Now this kind of adjustment is a sort of thing that's going to do well towards the beginning to middle of your Photoshop workflow. Now if you'd like to see um, my six stage Photoshop workflow and learn from that so that you can uh, you know, use it to, uh, to add some consistency to your processing, then uh, there's a link just below this video, a link or a button below this video that you can just click on to go and download that PDF. And you know when you do that, you'll see the six stages all laid out uh, with explanations of you know what techniques to use within each stage, uh, so that you can take techniques like this and any others that you learn, and you'll know exactly where to put them in the workflow for best effect. Um, yeah, so you know, if you want that cheat sheet, just go and click that link below the video to download it. And yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you soon.